Hey, thanks for joining another episode of The Driveway. So today we wanted to do sort of driving impressions in the Ford F-150 Lightning Pro. Um, so I picked my truck up about two weeks ago or so. Um, I'm heading to Costco, so doing big truck things. And uh, thought I'd just give you guys a flavor of what you know my impressions are. Again, it's not first impressions. I've been with the truck for about two weeks now, so I kind of have some, some thoughts and feelings around how this compares to uh, my previous 2018 uh, Platinum I had. Prior to that, a 17 and then a 2009. So I've had a couple F-150s and there's been, you know, a lot of changes on this on this platform. So I want to kind of talk through those and then obviously uh, give you that perspective as to how it relates with the Pro Trim. So uh, we'll get started and uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions and we'll talk through it all. So I guess first things first, hitting the garage door button. There is no garage door opener in the Pro. So bring your own. And as I'm backing out of my driveway here, the Pro does give you the capability to order the technology, uh, the tow technology package, which will come with the 360 degree cameras, which makes a big difference. Even having four previous F-150s, uh, or three, I should say, still need the cameras. Um, it's helpful with that, particularly with that front camera. Um, the 360 bird eye view helps parallel parking and all that stuff. So, um, so that's, that's helpful. Um, the first thing I would say when I got in the car was uh, my concern over the seats. And, you know, we've talked about it a few times now. The vinyl seats in the Pro are, are good. They're surprisingly comfortable. Um, I'll say that. There's, um, there's good cushioning on the seat itself. It hugs you rather well. Um, interestingly enough, because there's no lumbar support, um, it really is just like a bubble behind you that as you sit in the seat, you kind of mold into the bubble. It's not a bladder that inflates. It's just sort of air behind it. Um, kind of ends up kind of ends up holding you pretty well. Um, that being said, again, there's still no lumbar support directly. So, you know, over time, um, that can get a little fatiguing. I haven't taken, I haven't had too many problems with it per se. Um, but what is this lady doing here? She's causing all sorts of problems and don't hit my lightning because Lord knows I won't get a replacement anytime soon. Um, all right, so we're out of that. So the seats themselves, they hug you, no lumbar support, um, but, you know, they do they do move forward and backwards, not um, like on the seat track itself, so that'll move, but then, um, and your seat back will move forward and back. But, you know, interestingly enough, there's no vertical movement. So I'm six feet tall, which allows me to see the front of the truck pretty well. Um, if you were shorter, I could see that being an issue. Um, the pedals themselves don't adjust either. So some of the upper level trims, I think starting with the XLT, I could be wrong, let me know in the comments, but I think the XLT has adjustable pedals. I know I adjusted mine in my Platinum um, and that was helpful, but I don't really know how that compares to what the default setting is here. Um, I don't have any problem with the seating position um, in the Pro. So it works for me. It's just the vinyl seats end up kind of lacking that lumbar support and then also are pretty hot. Um, they don't breathe well. Somebody compared it to like the vinyl that's in a school bus. Uh, that's that's probably an exaggeration, but it's definitely not the marine grade vinyl that I had in my Bronco. Um, that was much more comfortable, um, breathed better, washable, all that. So I think that's just a different, you're different tiers of vinyl there. Um, this is obviously the pro trim. It's, it's convenient that it's, you know, pretty, pretty low maintenance and all that. So, um, so the, the vinyl kind of works well with the vinyl floors too. So the vinyl seats and vinyl floors let you kind of wash it out not worry about any dirt and that type of stuff. Uh, the doors are all, the door panels are all plastic and that's, um, you know, that, that kind of all goes, goes with the work trim, uh, approach they're trying to take here. So um, that's sort of as you're sort of sitting in the car and getting getting out of the driveway, then uh, as you're driving, the first thing you really notice is just how quiet this is. I mean, I've been going, I'm going about 45 miles an hour right now, and it's, it's whisper quiet in here. I know some some trims have a propulsion noise that they're including. Um, the Pro does not have that. So you're, um, you're just sort of listening to yourself. Um, I know my Tesla Model S has definitely has a propulsion noise as you accelerate there. Um, this this is quieter than that, which is shocking. I think I read somewhere, and again, don't quote me on this one, but um, 
some early tests were saying that this was one decibel quite one decibel louder than the new S class. Um, obviously, that's a combustion engine, but um, you know the level of insulation and, and noise here is um, sorry for that bumps there um, is is pretty impressive. So it really creates quite a great experience in the cabin itself. Um, there's a little bit of uh, wind noise from the mirrors, and that's sort of to be expected. You know, you can't really um, do too much when you have uh, all this. So we got these people just crossing the street here. Let's let them go. Um, so again, the, the wind noise is sort of it's more prevalent because you can you're more aware of it, right? So there's no engine noise to hear. Um, you've probably heard that in other uh, reviews of cars that or, uh, other EVs. I'd say that the road noise is also less than my Tesla. Um, tires end up making a much bigger difference in um, in your experience and how much noise you're really hearing. So um, that's that's really what it comes down to, right? Is the aerodynamics and then the tires are really what you're hearing. As far as the speed goes and the and the acceleration, this thing is is a rocket. Um, it's a rocket by any certainly pickup standards. Uh, obviously, things change a little bit when you start comparing it to other EVs. It's it's very quick. You know, the biggest change, right, is that you're not feeling the shifting in the transmission. So that linear acceler acceleration makes a big difference. I mean, my 2018 Platinum was fast and it had the 3.5 EcoBoost. You know, I never, never wanted for more power there. I have it now and this is, this is just another world fast. It's not as fast as the Tesla or anything like that. No one's really expecting it to be either. Um, but it's, you know, it still throws you back in the seat. It does have quite a bit of um, torque steer as you're accelerating. So we're getting on an on-ramp here. So, you know, you'll hear, you may hear, I was going to say, hear the engine. You'll just hear the, the air and the and all that as we kind of get on here. But, you know, it's, it's going to throw you back. When you really floor it, you do feel a lot of torque steer which is sort of disappointing. I think they could have done a better job with that. So when you floor it, you'll hear the, the tires chirp, which is impressive that you can have a 7,000 pound truck um, chirp its tires like that. But at the same time, you know, the, the torque steer is sort of strange. You can also probably see there's quite a bit of jostling happening right now. So the independent rear suspension, you end up having a much better ride. Um, it doesn't hop or skip like some of the ice trucks do as you go over the, the, the parts of the highway and particularly on on ramps and, and all those that, what are they called? Right, so as we kind of enter this on-ramp here, you'll see that, you know, it's just, this truck is just very planted. It doesn't skip over these bumps, but it does tend to kind of shift its weight up and down quite a bit more than I'm used to. And it maybe have something to do with the size of the truck that's causing that to be more exaggerated than other vehicles. So. You know, you're sort of trading what it feels like to be that side to side movement for more up and down. And that's probably a product of the independent suspension because you have each wheel operating independently versus, you know, the solid rear axle that it was sort of skipping across. Um, I'm no engineer, but that would just be my take on, on why the feels just a little bit different. Um, we're going 75 miles an hour right now, and it, it, it's whisper quiet in here. Um, you couldn't ask for anything really quieter than that from a pickup truck. I haven't driven something like the Rivian yet, but uh, you know, this is from a comfort perspective and all that, you know, it's, it's really composed on the highway. The suspension is, you know, it's not a sports car. You know, you hear a lot of comparisons with the Rivian right now, but that's got a McLaren suspension. That's the best of the best, right? And that's designed with sports car driving in mind, right? Um, even in a pickup truck. This is just going to feel like any traditional F-150. Um, once you're on the highway here, it's all about the same. So I think that, you know, that's something to, you know, just sort of compare it to. The noise, though, is, is where you're really, the noise, vibration, harshness, much less in this. 
and I think that that's where people are going to notice the difference. So we're getting a little bit closer to Costco now, and I did, you know, put it in Apple CarPlay. And one of the nice features that even works on the Pro here is the fact that your CarPlay navigation will pop up in the center dash. So as I approach the exit, it will prompt me and tell me that, you know, the turn is coming up, which is, which is nice, right? I mean, I think that um, that integration is, is certainly helpful. It's not a heads-up display, you know, which I wish, you know, they had. Uh, Chevy has that, and, and, you know, that's really the direction I think things should be going. But um, especially for such a technology-focused vehicle, you think that they would have kind of taken the opportunity to put that in there. But as far as I know, I don't think any other Ford models have heads-up displays yet. So they're a little bit behind the times. Chevy does, and I think they're putting that in quite a few vehicles. So the Ford's, uh, Ford's got some work to do there. But again, it's in the center stack, so you can see that pretty well. Um, but And especially in the pro trim, right? I mean, I think expectations need to be tempered a little bit. But as far as the drive goes, I mean, you know, this is... I, I would hesitate to be able to call out too much difference between something like this and the Platinum from a drive perspective. I mean, this is on 18-inch wheels, so you're going to talk about ride. Well, I mean, the ride is going to be better in the Pro than it would be in a Platinum with, I think, 22s. You know, that's going to it's going to soak up it a little bit better. Obviously, it doesn't, you know, look as good depending on your taste, but from a ride perspective, you're, you're going to sort of win out on the Pro. It's lighter, so the car is just going to feel um, a bit more nimble. And that makes that makes a difference. Um, I would call out too that this does have the plastic steering wheel, which is sort of just a pet peeve of mine. Um, plastic steering wheels kind of suck, but you know there's certainly options, right? I mean, I, in, in my last sorry, it's my radar detector. Um, in my last vehicles, those trucks I've put in the Raptor steering wheel, so I'll probably do the same thing here, and um, really to to just fix that problem. I mean, I've done that in every truck I've had from the Platinum to the Lariat to the old FX4 2009 version I had. So, you know, it sort of was a no-brainer anyway, so that was going to happen. And then I did just get back from Catskin Leather, or I should say the shop that's going to install my Catskin Leather yesterday, and they're going to go ahead and put in sort of a two-tone gray and black color. It's, it's really gray on the inserts, and then the, the wings here will be black with heated and cooled seats. And then they're actually going to go ahead and put in uh, a lumbar support bladder. It was 200 bucks, which I thought was, you know, a no-brainer. They, they got the seat open. Might as well put it in. So that'll be, um, that'll be coming in about two weeks or so. So I'll have a video on that as that sort of fixes my two major... My major problem with the truck right now is just those seats. I mean, as I'm sitting here, we've been in the car 13 minutes. And it's already getting warm behind my back. And it's not so much that they heat up like they're hot. It was in the garage, right? It's just your body sitting against it. It just heats up naturally more than um, most traditional seats. So, you know, those two things between the steering wheel and the seats getting kind of remedied. Uh, you know, like I said, you're hard pressed to find much of a difference um, between this and, and what you're getting in the Pro. I mean, excuse me, in the Platinum. You'll have better stereo, right, for sure. And that's that's obviously not lost on me, as well as the um, bigger center screen. And, and that's certainly debatable as to whether or not um, that's worth it. You know, I'm sure you've seen a lot of other commentators talk about the buttons, right? I mean, the buttons here are much easier to use. They're all right in front of me. I can just tap what I need, raise the air conditioner up and down versus that 15-inch center stack, which has the same buttons at the bottom. So you have your 12-inch, 12 inches or so at the top that have the same functionality that I do, and then they just replace my buttons with touchscreen. So, you know, which is which is harder to use than just turning my knob for the volume or well, the volume they have the knob for, but the temperature and auto and all that. So, um, so yeah. So I mean, again, when you start looking at what you're getting in in these sort of lower end trims, also say lower end, just from a hierarchy perspective in the Pro and the XLT, I mean, you really got to ask yourself. Um, in my opinion, you know, is the extra, you know, in some cases, 30 or 40 grand worth it? Now, we can have conversations about the battery for sure, right? I, I think that fundamentally changes the use cases for a lot of people and how far you can get on 230 miles. If I recall correctly, it's about 10 or 11 minutes on my battery at an Electrify America station to get 54 miles. So, you know, you can do your math on where you're going and, 
And if that gets you there um, with a quick charge, I'd say that's pretty pretty functional. I know for me to get to the oh at that new McLaren. Um, for me to get to the beach here would probably I could probably just get there to the coast um, and need to charge and be under ten percent. Um, you know, it's just a matter of how how risky you're feeling that day. So I would recommend probably taking a ten minute uh, ten minute bio break, go charge up, and uh, get those get those extra fifty miles to make sure you make it there. But um, yeah, I mean, as far as the battery itself goes, you know, that's going to make a difference. I, you know, I can't imagine it makes a ton of sense to just splurge for the battery for the speed. Um, this thing is so fast, that, and I've had all sorts of, I mean, even just take the Tesla, right? I mean, it, it's, this is fast that I'm driving a car that's zero to 60 in three seconds in the Tesla. I mean, I, I, you don't need, you really don't need the uh, speed on, um, from the battery in this type of vehicle. Um, it just can't handle it. You can't take turns that fast. You can't, it still has the limitations of physics, right? So, you know, that's something to think about. Um, but the range is certainly a, a bigger deal, right? Um, towing, you know, I'd say towing is a tricky topic, right? I mean, if you tow a lot and you have a lot of distance to tow, um, this just may not be the vehicle for you and that's fine, right? I mean, I think that folks who are towing hundreds of miles you know, probably should just go get a diesel. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's, 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 you know, guys, there's, there's um, a time and place for EVs. And, and particularly for me, you know, I looked at it and said, I don't tow. Um, I do use the bed a lot. And the size of the bed makes a big difference. And now having the front trunk, but like, you know, the, the fact that I'm saving all this gas money, that was the worst part about my platinum was it was nice, but it was, you know, even then it was getting pretty good. I was getting 20 miles a gallon on the highway, but, um, you know, the worst part about a pickup truck, right, is generally your gas mileage and your acceleration. So, you know, this remedies both of those. Um, and again, it's in the pro trim, you still have some limitations, but you know, not, not huge sacrifices and, um, and they're, and they're, they're easy to remedy, right? I mean, like things like the 360 degree camera, that would be harder to put into a pro aftermarket, but to me, fix those seats, get the steering wheel, there's a, I'm at Costco now with lines for the gas station. Joke's on them. Uh, but you can fix everything. You can put a new stereo in, get the seats done. You know, the, the like I was saying, the 360 degree camera can't really do that type of stuff aftermarket. So the fact that they have that, at, you know, as an option made a huge difference for me. Um, the running boards, those can get added on later. So that's not a huge deal. And, um, yeah, so then, you know, I'll see, uh, I'll just probably keep this forever, it sounds like at this point, but anybody who's watching this who knows me is probably laughing at that statement, but we'll see. Um, so, those are my driving impressions. I know it kind of meandered a little bit beyond just driving, but hopefully this was helpful perspective for you. Um, this is, you know, one of our early videos on the driveway, and I've taken a couple different approaches. I've done some top tens, done now this driving impression, a walkthrough. So I'm kind of getting my feet wet and figuring out what works for you guys. Um, I really like kind of engaging in the comments and getting your feedback and questions and using that to sort of drive uh, the next bit of content. So, you know, welcome that, keep that coming. And, you know, if this was helpful for you to hit the like button, really would appreciate some subs more subscribers. Um, you know, that obviously really helps out the channel and, um, you know, hit the bell and get notified going forward. And, Let's see where this goes. So thanks, everybody. Take care.